Hi, my name is Matt Johnson, and this video is the first in a three-part series that I've created on building your own display elements for an outdoor Christmas light show. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a leaping light arch. The leaping light arch has a lot of versatility and can do a lot of really neat effects. I posted a few of these effects in the intro of this video, and I'll show you some more at the very end. Most of the parts necessary to build the Leaping Light Arch are available at Home Depot or Lowe's. The exception is the tube and the lights that go inside the tube. There is a tubing that is available at Home Depot or Lowe's called PEX tubing, but this tubing does not have as good of translucent properties as the tube which you see here, which is called a high density polyethylene tube. I used about nine feet of this tube it's available through McMaster Car, and it's about $1.50 a foot. The lights that I used in this arch are actually pixels. This is a pixel strip. On this strip, there are three individual clusters per pixel. Each cluster has three LED lights in it, but the three clusters are controlled as one pixel. In order to use a pixel strip such as this, you need to have a controller. And we'll talk about the controller a little bit more later. But this allows you to use your computer to sequence it to the music. This pixel strip has 60 pixels per meter. It gives a good dense look to the effects as you do certain things such as chases. It has a waterproof rubber sealant around it to help prevent moisture from affecting the circuit boards. And it really works well because you can cut it and solder it just like you would any other wires to fit the size of your arch. The base of the arch is made up of three basic components. This orange piece is a rebar cap the crossbar is a half inch metal conduit and this piece here that holds it all together is just a pipe hanger. The two pieces here have been painted black but these are standard parts that you can pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's. The first step in creating the arch is cutting the tubing to the correct length. This is cut to just over nine feet. I used 9 feet based on the size that I wanted it to be and you can make it whatever size you want it to be for your yard. You can see that the tubing is fairly thin. It's only about an eighth inch thick but it's also very rigid. I used a hacksaw to cut it and I also created these four slits in each side that will allow it to grasp better when squeezed by the pipe hanger. The tube is fairly flexible you can put it out in the sun and give it the correct arch that you want but it's also a little bit rigid so that's the purpose of the crossbar is to keep it in the shape that you desire. I found that for the tubing length of nine and a half feet 70 inches for the cross member will create the perfect arch. I flatten the ends of the tubing using a bench vise to give a nice area to drill for the bolt that attaches the pipe hanger. I then painted the whole assembly black just to make it look a little nicer and to help it blend in at night. The next step after cutting the cross member is to attach the pipe hanger. I just used a bolt with a lock nut, drilled a hole through the flat part of the conduit and attached it like so. I painted the whole thing black just to make it look a little nicer but it's not necessary. The next step is creating the actual base for the arch. I used two of these rebar caps. On each one I punctured a hole through one of the fins. Through that hole 
I put a tie, a zip tie, and created a loop. That loop will be used to connect the hook from the bungee cord into the base. This will keep a constant tension on the light strip so it doesn't flop around inside the tube. On the other side of the arch, I did the same thing with the cap where I created a hole and put a zip tie loop through it. But in addition, I drilled another hole. This hole is for the plug. It's not necessary to have a plug, but it makes it look a little bit nicer. It makes it a little bit more weatherproof. I purchased this plug through the same source that I got the lights, which is through Ray Wu. Once I had a hole for the plug, I just pressed it through and soldered on the connection that will attach to the light strip. The next step is creating the hooks on the actual light strip to attach to the bases. On here you can see I took the rubber casing that's around the strip, I pulled it a little bit farther from where the strip ends, and I squeezed a tube that's made of brass on the end of the rubber to give it additional rigidity. I then stuck a zip tie through it to create a loop and attach the end of a bungee cord to that loop. I cut the bungee cord down and retied a knot because I didn't need the full six to eight inches that the bungee cord came in. The other hook now will attach to the zip tie that we originally created inside the base. This will now create a tension to hold the pixel strip taut inside the tube so it won't flop around. Once you have the cross member bolted together and everything's ready. You then put the cross member onto the end of the tubing, like so. And you feed the light strip into the tube. You want to make sure that the LEDs on the light strip are facing the open-ended part of the tube, which you can check that when you're pulling through the other side. Make sure that your bungee cord is hooked on to the zip tie loop inside the first base. This could fall off as you're pulling it through, so you'll want to make sure after you pull it through that it's still very tight. Another thing you can do just to ensure it stays on there, and I'll go ahead and do that now, is just use your pliers. Crimp the hook a little bit so that it's harder for it to slip off, but you could still take it off if you need to. You then slide that first base into the end of the tube. So after attaching the first base, come over to the second side, bend the tube, and slide the hanger and clamp it around the end. Then your bungee cord hook should be about three or four inches up so that when you pull it, it'll make it just the right amount of tension. I use some pliers just to grab up in there because it's just beyond the reach of where my fingers can reach. And then you take the other end of the hook of the bungee cord and you stick it around the zip tie loop that you'd created in the base. Then go ahead and slide the base on. And meanwhile, you'll want to make sure that your pixel strip or your light strip 
is laying flush along the inside of the tube and that the actual lights on the boards are facing outward into the open part of the tube. After you slide each of the rebar caps on the end of the tube, go ahead and move the clamp so that it's just about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the tube. You'll notice that the slits that we made earlier in the tube are what allow the clamp to really pull that tube into the rebar cap once we tighten this bolt. So I now finalize the positioning of everything and tighten the bolt. So now it's very secure on there. I then will move to the other side, readjust, if needed, this clamp as well, put it into the right position, and tighten the bolt accordingly. Once both ends of the cross member are secured on the tube, it's complete and you are ready for testing. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please watch my other two videos. Part two, I build a pixel tree, and in part three, I build a pixel matrix or a grid. Thank you for watching.